Today on Muddy Beards, I want to turn this into this. All right, so here is the background for this project. I am currently sitting at about five inches of lift in the rear of my 99 Jeep Cherokee, which I call the trail plug. And um, I have 36 inch by 1450 uh, swampers. Um, and I've had those tires on for about five or six runs now, and I'm running into a lot of clearance problems, especially in the rear. Um, you can notice here that Things are pretty beat up. The rear of my, um, the rear quarter panel's kind of beat up and it's actually smashing into the back of my fender. I'm running into some real clearance issues. So there's really three things I could do. Um, one would be to lift it more, which I don't want to do. Um, I like being as low as possible and I think five inches is where I want to be. The second one would be bump stops. Um, you know, prevent it from flexing all the way up so that I don't hit the um, body. Um, but I like the idea of being able to flex. Um, I know that down travel is better than up travel, but uh, I still like to be able to have some up travel. And the way it is right now, I'm not getting much at all. So the third option, which I'm choosing to do, is to cut. So I've already done your typical XJ um, cut and fold, where you cut slits all the way up to the pinch seam and then use, you know, like a hammer or something to bend the tabs up. As you can see, there they are bent up, which gives you some room but it's not enough. So I'm at the point that if I cut more, it's actually going to separate the body. Um, the inner fender and the outer quarter panel um, are sandwiched together. And so if I cut any further, I will be separating the body and separating those pinch welds. And I'm going to have to be to rebuild the whole fender. So that's what I'm attempting to do. Um, so the first step is to cut. And so what I've done is um, is I've marked out how I want to cut this thing. Um, as you can see, I have some pen marks here. And it took me quite a while to figure out what I wanted to do. In the front, I'm basically running along uh, the line here, almost all the way up to the door, which should me lead me down right straight to my rock slider, which will be convenient. Um, and I basically follow the line, actually. You could still faintly see the line from the original um, fender flares, and so that was actually easy to follow. Then once I got to the top here, um, I didn't want to follow the original fender line because I didn't think it'd be enough clearance. And so essentially what I did is just took my measuring tape and I roughly did it about an inch and a half of clearance. And so I was able to run across the top here, inch and a half, just kind of marking and filling in, marking and filling in. And then once I got out here, it was a little bit more of guesswork. Um, I measured just slowly out in half inch increments. I just kind of slowly went a half inch out, half inch out, half inch out, half inch out to where I got. And I think I'm somewhere close to about four inches out here, which should be, which should be enough. Um, I've seen people who cut all the way out and, you know, they usually get rid of your gas door and you, um, you can relocate the fuel lines and stuff, but I want to maintain somewhat of the factory look And so that's why I'm going to be doing this and so um, I'm going to just take my angle grinder um, with a cutoff wheel and I'm going to cut into the unknown So much more room for activities. Look at all that cut out. 
So I uh, just used my angle grinders, you guys saw, to cut this. Um, I tended to favor the inside of the line, like the bottom part of my drawing, especially with using the cutoff wheel. Um, I guess I, a theory behind that is, you know, that if you cut too high, you know, on, on the top side of the line, you know, you're kind of screwed and it kind of messes up your whole cut. But if I cut towards the bottom side, even if it's not perfect, I can always take a grinder back and fix it. But it actually came out pretty good. I actually like the profile. I think it's going to look great. Um, as far as the inside part, so here's the piece that I cut out, which is basically the whole outer fender well. Um, there's a seam that runs straight across here. You can actually see where I cut. And so I had to cut all that seam out and then of course the outside as well. And here comes the whole piece of that outer fender just pops right out. Um, however though, I do not think I'm done cutting yet. Um, one of the biggest issues that I'm having with clearance with my tires is actually the rear part of the fender. Um, and if I don't do anything with this inner fender, then I think I'm still gonna have issues hitting it I mean you can literally see where the tire has bent, you know the whole inner fender So what I'm gonna show you is I need to go to the inside of the Jeep Oh, By the way, you're definitely gonna want to strip out all the interior pieces pretty self-explanatory take all the plastics out It's just a few screws um, I took out all seat belt um, the seat belt assemblies those were these uh, like T50 Torx bolts. I even took out the spare tire um, bracket. I'm not gonna need that stuff anymore. So I stripped that all back and then of course pushed the carpet back. But here is my inner fender and this is what I think I'm going to do. I think what I'm gonna do is actually going to cut the inner fender in half. And what I should be able to do is I should be able to reuse that back half that I actually cut out. So I'm probably going to have to cut this out like this and then even cut along the floor. And then what I can do is literally just move this back. I cut the outside, the actual quarter panel here, and I moved it back about four inches. And so I think, you know, I'll have to see, but I should be able to move this back four inches and then just take, you know, take a piece of sheet metal and then just, you know, fill it in. You know, like so. So essentially what I'm doing is just extending out the factory and our fender well. I think that's going to be the easiest route. Um, it'll be easiest for me. You know, I don't have to rebuild every single part of this fender that way. Um, and I think that's going to look good and I think it'll work out. And then all I should have to do really is take, you know, another piece of sheet metal and essentially just go from the top here and I can actually just go straight across and hopefully rebuild um, the entire outer part of the fender well as well. So I need to get all of this stuff out. There's like this seam sealer. You can see I've already started kind of trying to cut it out. I used razor blade and, and a chisel and it is, it is on there. So I'm thinking maybe taking like a wire wheel or something to try to remove the rest of this stuff because um, it's a little bit of a pain and I definitely don't want to be cutting over it because I'm afraid it might catch fire or something. And that right there is where like my fuel lines go through so fire would not be a good thing. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead, get this measured out. I gotta try to get as straight a line as possible, get all the rest of the seam sealer taken out and then I am going to go ahead and cut this thing, cut the floor right here, try to get everything matched up even with the outside of the fender and move this back and get this project going. What a pain in that. Now with most of that seam sealer taken away, I was able to grind most of that pretty clean and I was able to make my lines, make my measurements of where I wanna cut. So essentially I'm going basically from this bolt hole is centered and I used a piece of cardboard as a flat, flat edge Kind of messed up there with one line, but I'm basically going to follow this line and cut around here to cut out the rest of this inner fender well. And then I'll see what I need to do to cut out probably part of this floor. I'm probably going to have to come straight across here. Um, and then I should be able to move this whole thing back and then fill in the missing piece here and then figure out what I got to do for the inner fender. So let's get this thing cut.
Hi, Mom. There is now a giant hole in my Jeep. So with this successfully now cut out, um, as you can see, basically the plan is, you know, it used to be here. So the plan is to move this thing um, back. And so essentially it'll kind of sit like this. So I do have a little bit of a gap that I got to fill in there. Um, but this way it's going to line up with that outside, um, with the outside quarter panel. And so essentially what I need to do is, I already drew it out, is that I have to cut some more of the floor pan out here. As you can see, it kind of follows the contour of, um, you know, the fender, the fender well that I cut out. So I'm going to cut basically straight across here, cut out the rest of this floorboard, and then I should be able to start mating this up here on the side. I'm assuming I might have to trim out some of this um, to make it fit up against, you know, where the filler neck is for the gas tank. Um, I'm not sure it's going to quite fit right there, so I might have to do a little bit of trimming here on the edge, but for the most part, I mean, I'm starting to get my fender built here. And I'm getting to a place now where I can actually start to rebuild this fender well. So on this bottom piece right here, I got a little overzealous and cut out just a little bit too much. There's like a drain plug hole right here. And I feel like if I would have cut that thing, the drain plug in half, instead of cutting out the entire thing, it probably would have been perfect. Um, but again, you know, I'm learning here too. So what I did is I ended up taking a patch. I, I got a piece of steel and I was able to actually weld in a patch here, which should actually make it a lot stronger so it's better. So now that I got that, I'm gonna be able to take my piece here, um, the outer half, or the, uh, the rear half of the inner fender that I cut out, and I should be able to actually get this thing about where I want it to. And I'm just gonna tack it in, and then, as far as the center piece, I actually took a piece of steel, and this is a uh, 16 gauge, so it's quite a bit thicker than the uh, factory stuff. But the nice part about that is, is again, it's gonna make this thing a lot more structurally sound. And so, I just kind of started hand bending it in places, but you notice, I mean, that's kind of what it's gonna look like. Um, when I get this thing tacked in. So it's just extending that fender out and just making the inner fender longer. Um, and then the piece right here at the very end, I bent this in just a little bit so it can follow the contour of this a little bit better. Um, it's not exactly straight here. I might have to grind this down a little bit. But that way when I actually go to put the outer fender in and it comes straight across, I mean, it'll meet up perfectly with it and it'll seal up this little gap that you see. And so, you know, no dirt and water and stuff can get in. Um, and it should be nice and structurally sound. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this piece tacked in. I'm gonna tack in my patch. And I'm not gonna fully burn it in yet because I wanna make sure everything fits and I want to start building my outer fender liner um, too before I burn this thing completely in. Man, welding sheet metal is so much fun. But anyway, as you guys can see, I got the uh, inner fender here pretty much all at least tacked into place. I did blow through on a couple of spots here, as you can see, where it's really thin. Um, some of that's going to be hard to weld, but I'll figure that out later. But for the most part, I mean, there it is. I mean, the, the whole inner part of the fender well is now pretty much in shape. And so I got my patch in so that I could extend it out, move this back tack welded it in. So really I think the next step is to show you what I got going on to build the outer fender well. So I'm going to take you into here and show you what I've already got going on. So what I've done is I've made cardboard templates to kind of fill in all these new gaps. And really all I did was take um, a six inch wide piece of cardboard and I basically just laid it up flat against here and I was able to kind of push it into place and then I just took my sharpie and I just traced around the outside edge and I was able to cut it out and actually form it into here. So there it is. Um, I made four different pieces 
And what's nice about this cardboard is, is that if you notice, as I was putting into the place and like taping into the place, I had to bend the cardboard a little bit in order to make it fit around the contour of the fender well. Um, again, I'm using 16 gauge steel, there's my sheet down there, and it's not the easiest thing to bend. And I don't have anything like an English wheel or anything like that to bend it properly, you know, in a perfect round circle. So I think what I'm going to do is when I go ahead and take these templates off and cut them out of the sheet metal, um, I'm actually going to mark where these lines are. And it might not be like the perfect, like, you know, spherical, you know, round part for inside the fender well, but it's going to fit the contours. Um, and what I'm gonna do next really is I need to start getting this thing put together. So I think what I'm gonna do is I made four of these again, four of these templates. There's one here, one for sort of like this middle piece. And then I have another one here. And then the fourth one goes along the back here because it had some weird bends to it too. Um, to follow the, the actual quarter panel here. But I think instead of cutting this out in one big piece, I think I'm gonna cut each one out separately. I really don't know if that's the best thing to do, but I think it's gonna be the easiest for me to manage when I'm putting these pieces up, when they're actually in steel. You know, I think it's gonna be easier for me to be able to get them in here, you know, use one hand to kind of lay it down and then one hand to get it tack welded on. And then the seams where they fit together, I mean, I can easily just weld those um, together even once they're in. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off this first piece here. Um, I'm gonna go and trace it out onto the steel, cut it out, and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna get this thing tacked in. All right, so I got my piece cut out and this is where the cardboard becomes um, really handy again. So you can see where I actually, the bends went in the cardboard as I fit it into the fender here. Um, and so what I've done is, is that I just m put the template back on, I lined it up and I just put the marks um, on the piece of steel here. And so what I think I'll do is, is, again, I'm trying to mark out the same place where it was bending and conforming around. Uh, my fender here and so what I think I'll do is, is I'll just draw my straight edges between the two lines and then what I'll do is I'll just score them like just you know don't cut all the way through just kind of score them with my angle grinder um, and that way I'll be able to bend this really easily I'll be able to move it back and forth so that it'll actually fit the contour of my fender so I'm gonna cut these and then I'm actually gonna get this thing up into place and get it tacked together all right so now that I got this thing scored you can see that because I did this, now it should make it to where it'll bend where I want it. So if I put it, you know, where I had it lined up, I can literally just start kind of forcing it into place. I might have to get a hammer for this top piece or score it just a little bit more to get it to bend. Man, it's conforming pretty well though, actually. So here's what I got done so far. So there's one whole section in. Um, I gotta go back, and I'll probably grind obviously some of these uh, um, welds a little bit, but the outside actually turned out pretty good. These little cuts that I made worked perfect. All I really had to do is I had to get it in place. Once I started tacking it, you know, I could get like vice grips on it here, and then I was able to kind of just use my rubber mallet and kind of just mallet it into place. I mean, it's looking pretty good. Um, I don't think that this really weakens it necessarily. I could always go back and fill that with weld, but I think it's going to work. And so basically, I am just going to repeat that process with each one of these templates um, and then eventually I'll be able to weld them together like this seam right here obviously I'll be able to weld that together um, and then I'll be able to finish welding the rest of this fender together and I'll be pretty much you know ready to actually make it look look nice
So check it out. Isn't this pretty cool? So here it is. I am I am done. So I got this thing, um, I got the seam sealer put on around the edge of the inside and the outside. Um, and then what I did was I, I threw, a, threw a little bit of primer on it and then I threw, um, it's just Rust-Oleum um, undercoat paint. It's kind of expensive, but I got a little bit of overspray and stuff and I'm honestly not worried about that because I got some plans for this. I actually plan on building some quarter panel armor to go across here. Um, with a little bit of a tube fender. So I'm planning on doing it in a, in a future video. But, uh, you know, there it is. I got all my sheet metal work done. I think it looks pretty cool with all those grooves in there. And um, I got a lot more clearance. Um, you know, the rear tire has a lot more move, room to move up. You know, in comparison to... Let's check out the other side, because I haven't actually done the other side yet. So in comparison to the other side, you know, it's... It's really close. Um, I already started to draw out my line for the other side here, but you know, it's uh, you can see that this side was rubbing pretty bad too. It's actually beating up the inner fender well on this side as well too. So um, it even actually looks the Jeep looks a little bit taller even, um, but you know, it turned out pretty well. Um, I like the curvature of it. It's not, you know, perfect, perfect, but it still maintains a pretty stock look. It's nothing extreme, but uh, I really enjoyed the way that it turned out, and I'm looking forward to being able to run this thing without having to, uh, you know, without having all the clearance issues that I had before. I want to thank you guys for tuning in to Muddy Beards. If you enjoyed the video and if it helped you out, give us a thumbs up. Um, I'd really appreciate it. If you have any questions about what I did here, make sure you leave a comment below. And um, you should also subscribe to our channel. Um, check out some of our other content. We got wheeling videos, some you know fabrication stuff, XJ stuff, TJ stuff, and uh, we plan on doing a lot more. Um, definitely tune in. I plan on doing some more with this project back here. Um, as I said before, um, some quarter panel armor and tube fenders are in the future um, once I finish the other side, of course. Um, so thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the trail.